Hi guys, I'm Smithers, and I got a lot of videos on my channel on how to build drift tracks and stuff like that. Um, but I read all the comments, and I get emails and stuff, and I do understand not everybody has access to a welder. So uh, what I'm going to try to do tonight is uh, figure out how to build a bolt-together drift trike uh, that won't require any welding. And I'm just going to use some basic hardware and... Maybe just a couple tools, a, a power drill and a grinder, and let's uh, see what we can figure out. I'm going to build this whole trike uh, with just a couple of these. Uh, I'm going to use this drill and grinder. And um, If some of you don't have access to a grinder, and you can get a hold of a uh, circular saw. Uh, one of these abrasive blades will go on it, and you'd be able to do the whole job with that. Um, and if not, a... Uh, even a hacksaw, if you got time and patience, you can make it happen with that. Alright, this is the bike I got for this project. Uh, this is the 20 inch Princess. And this is going to be a low budget uh, bolt together drift trick. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start cutting it up and stripping her down. Alright, well if you can see what I did here, I, uh, I, I cut the top part of this frame and then... I cut a slot in it and I bent it down I squeezed it so it folded inside itself here and I cooked out the bottom part of this metal and I kind of hammered it into, into shape a little bit and uh, I was able to get some tappers in it and that'll really reinforce this neck and you want to take your time on this part cut a little bit at a time because um, once you cut it short it's short but I got a pretty good fit on that one. Uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm making a template and I use poster board a lot. It's a uh, it's real easy to trace and cut and you can tape pieces to it and then that way when I have a real good fit I, uh, I trace it onto my sheet metal here and then I only have to cut that once. Alright, well this is what my plate looks like. Uh, I need to mark the holes all the way around it and trim the tabs down a little bit. But I also need to make a 5 8 hole through this large tab and my axle will run right through that. Well I went around this uh, piece and I drilled holes all the way around it and I kind of trimmed the tabs to size a little bit. And um, this, this bracket right here was where the kickstand used to bolt and See, I put a hole in the plate there. I'll be able to bolt that, and that'll help make it solid. Well, I just got this all uh, bolted up, and if you can see, I got tappers going around the outside edge, but um, I got solid bolts and nuts. I got one here, and then I got a couple back here by the axle, and it really made this solid, and I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, this is another piece I made. Um, this was also part of this upper frame, and... I'm going to bolt it right here. Um, it took me a little bit of time to get this one to fit good as well, but uh, it's an important piece, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this bolted up. Well, there it is, uh, installed and finished, and it really, uh, it really sturdied that up a lot, so I'm pretty satisfied with that piece, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to the rear axle. I slid my axle through. Um, it's extended a little bit extra long on each side, but I'll cut it to size once I figure out how long I need. Um, these are the two tires I'm going to use. A uh, couple inflatables and um, a couple things I need to do. I need a couple spacer bars that will go over this um, that the wheels will sit against. and I think I'm going to use a couple of these seat posts and I'm going to get those taken apart and cut to size. but. I also need to come up with a 
either a U-bolt or a way to a way to clamp this in place so it doesn't move. So I'll uh, I'll see what I can come up with. All right. Well, I cut both of these uh, seat posts down and I left a tab on both of them there in Bennett. And I'm gonna draw a hole through that. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take that bolt back out and run it through that as well. Yeah, I'm gonna do that on both sides. Well guys, I got those uh, bolted up and they're good and solid. And so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a small hole through the axle. I'll slip the wheel on, put a washer, and then a cotter pin will hold it in place. And then I'll be able to uh, cut it to size and do the same thing on the other side. And, and this is what's left of the frame. Uh, I might make a couple uh, angle braces here. Well, I got both uh, wheels installed and pinned in place and I also made a couple of these uh, braces here and they're just clamped in place with a U-bolt. Here's uh, what the bottom side of the build looks like. See I got a U-bolt holding the axle but uh, the axle can't slide out anyway since uh, the wheels pinned on each side. Well I got a, uh, a seat mounted on it and I also started to put the front end back together. Um, I still need to make a couple foot pegs for the front of it. Um, I'm just going to bolt a piece of pipe on each side. Um, there's not enough thread left on the axle to screw on a regular set of pegs, but other than that, I need to uh, I need to find a couple pieces of plastic to use on the back wheels. I got the foot pegs bolted on the front here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, strip this bike back down, put a paint job on it, and next time you see it, it'll be a finished trike. Here it is all uh, finished up. I got it painted and reassembled and I'm pretty happy with the end result. Um, this was a little girl's Barbie bicycle and I turned it into a pretty respectable and functional drift trike and uh, I had very little money in it and I didn't have to lay a weld on any of it so uh, hopefully I helped someone out and uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.